My friends, it's an honor to uh, greet you today in the uh, name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am excited to uh, preach to you today. If you will, go with me to Mark, the uh, fourth chapter, the 35th verse, if you will. And I'm going to give you a moment uh, to turn to it. Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse number 35. And when you find it, I trust that you will read it with me. Listen to the word of the Lord. On the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Now when they had left, the crowd had left, watch this, they took him along with them in the boat, and there were other small boats with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that water was already filling the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Watch this. He was in the stern asleep. He was sleeping on a pillow. And they awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the winds and the waves, and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. Watch this. And there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Do you not have any faith? So they feared exceedingly and said to one another, how can this be that even the wind and the sea obeys Jesus? If you would allow me to use the subject, it will simply be you can handle life storms. You can handle life storms. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. God, I invite you now to come into my house and to each person's house, God, that's uh, online today. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we pray for those, God, who have been impacted by our COVID-19. We pray for their families. We pray for the ones who have uh, uh, lost their lives. We pray for their families. God, we pray for our president today, God, for those over us, God. We pray, God, that you would find a cure uh, very soon, God, that you would give man and woman the knowledge to find a cure, God, for this horrible virus. God, we thank you, God, because you are awesome. We invite you now, God, to uh, have your way in this service with us, God, as we worship together, God, online. In Jesus' name, let every believer say amen. My friends, I don't think there is a person on this planet now that would argue that this country is not in a storm. When people think of storms, they uh, think of high winds, rain, et cetera, et cetera. But today I want to uh, talk to you about an entirely different storm, a storm that has nothing to do with the weather. But today I want to talk to you concerning the storms of life. COVID-19 has impacted the way we live our lives. Uh, COVID-19, people are dying. 6.6 .6 million people lost their jobs. Oh, my brothers and sisters, for the people who had their faith in the stock market, well, guess what? That has uh, taken a dive. COVID-19 has impacted the way, we, the way we live our lives. We are in a storm. Not only is this country is in a storm, but the whole world is in what I call a global storm. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus helps us out. Jesus uh, told his disciples, listen guys, get in the boat and let's cross over to the other side. So the first point I want to drop in your spirit is you can survive life storms with the right protection. I'm going to say it one more time. You can survive life storms with the right protection protection. Now, I find this fascinating because Jesus said to his disciples, go, get in the boat, cross over. Now, Jesus knew that a storm was coming. But when I look closely at this text, uh, Jesus wants us to know that when we are faithful, we can survive life storms. But my brothers and my sisters, the thing about storms, uh, uh, storms is simply this. They can occur at any time. The other day I was on my way home 
It was a beautiful day outside. Out of nowhere, the clouds turned dark. It started raining. The wind started blowing. And just like that, I was caught up in a storm. Now, the good news was I was in my car and my vehicle uh, protected me from the storms of life. But my brothers and my sisters, today, I want you to know there are some storms that your car, uh, your house, or your money cannot protect you from. Listen, my car cannot protect me from a spiritual storm. My car cannot uh, protect me from what's happening in our country right now. And oh, my brothers and my sisters, I'm here to tell you that when you have the right equipment, you can handle life storms. Check this out. I went camping about uh, 10 years ago, and I remember when I got in the woods, uh, the first thing that I had, I had a tent, I had the right shoes, I had the right clothing, I had food, I had a uh, spray, a uh, repellent spray, for mosquitoes, I had everything I need needed. I had the right gear in order to survive out in the wilderness. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the same thing uh, 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 implies with us right now. In order to make it through this storm that we're in right now, we need some help from on high. Listen to me very carefully. You're going to need some help that only God can give. And the longer I live, I am beginning to learn there are some storms that man cannot bring us out of. Prove it, Dr. Williams. David said in Psalm 121, and I love this song, and you might want to turn to it with me. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Verse number three says, he will not let my foot slip he who watches over Israel never sleeps. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. Verse number five says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun should not harm you, watch this, by day, nor the moon by night. And here's the part I like. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Tell the person in your house right now, God will protect me from every harm that comes up against me. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He who watches over your life, the Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in. My brothers and my sisters, you can handle the storms of life when you have the right protection. Point number two, point number two, close proximity to Jesus does not protect you from the storm. Close proximity from Jesus does not protect you from life storms. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, the Bible says that Jesus sent his disciples out. Listen, they were not the only ones out there. The Bible says that there were other small boats out on the lake. What are you talking about, Pastor? Now, let me drop this in your spirit. There are some storms that uh, happen to us that are difficult and they're different. Let me help you with this. All of his disciples, Jesus' disciples, they knew how to handle the sea. Most of them were fishermen. They knew the uh, sea. They knew how to handle storms. But it was something about this storm or that storm they had encountered that messed with their faith. And I don't know about you, but if the truth be told, all of us have encountered storms. But have you ever said to yourself, it's something about this storm. It's something about this problem. It's something about this situation that I'm in that's different from all the other situations that I have encountered. So the disciples went and they told Jesus, hey man, we're in trouble because it was something about that storm that they encountered that they knew that they were in trouble. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, some people think uh, because they joined the church, because they sing in the choir, because they work in the church, that somehow they are exempt from life's storms. But I'd stop by to tell you that there are some storms we just have to go through. 
Prove it, Dr. Williams. Jesus was in the boat with his disciples. Check this out. He was in the boat and he allowed them to go through the storm. The other boats that were on the sea, they got caught up in the storm too. And I submit to you, even the folks that were on dry land, they felt the remnants from the storm. What am I trying to say? There are some storms that you just have to go through. So now let's pause for a minute because I want to make sure that you receive this because this is deep right here. All of the disciples got caught in the storm and the Bible says there were other small boats, right? With them who got caught up in the storm. No one is exempt from trouble. Uh, COVID-19 has placed all of us in the same boat. Look at the person uh, who is in your home and say COVID-19 has placed all of us in the same boat. This virus doesn't care whether you are black or white, rich or poor. This virus doesn't care how much money you have in the bank. It doesn't care where you live. This virus does not care how famous you are. COVID-19 doesn't care whether you are a governor, congressman, or woman. It doesn't care whether you have access to the White House or, or, or uh, whoever house. Can I just say it that way? COVID-19 has made it clear that we are all in the same boat together. So my brothers and my sisters, in America right now, all of us are in the same boat together. Black, white, blue, green, pink, it doesn't matter. And I believe, I believe that God is in the process of working miracles in, um, in America right now. Can I get to my third point? You can handle the pressures of life if you grasp the uh, difference between a problem versus a storm. I'm going to say it differently. You can handle your storms. Some things are a problem and some things are a storm. Fix it, Dr. Williams. A problem is when you are faced with the issue or a problem or some kind of a problem that you can solve on your own. A problem is when you have a crisis and you are able to work it out on your own. A storm, on the other hand, is when something happens that's beyond your control. You know that you are in a storm when you have a problem that you can't solve or when you have what I call a uh, crisis and the crisis is controlling you. That's when you are in a storm. When you, uh, when, 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 when you are dealing with the situation that you can't solve because the problem seems to be uh, controlling you, that's when you're in a storm. And I want you to know today that there are some things that can put you in a storm just like that. Losing a loved one can put you in a storm. Robbing Peter to pay Paul can put you in a storm. Going through a uh, divorce can put you in a storm. When your kids won't act right can put you in a storm. And I believe that there are, there are situations that we need God to help us out of. And when we're in a storm, that's when we need God the most. And I submit to you today that this country cannot get out of the storm unless God brings us up by his grace and by his mercy. So my brothers and sisters, when you're in a storm, we have to learn how to trust God. And that's why the hymnists say, and sometimes we try to handle the storms by ourselves. And I believe that we have to learn how to trust God to give stuff to God, to give our problems to God and let the Lord solve them for us. That's why the hymn that said, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Point number four, point number four, you can make it through life's storms if you practice self-care. Something in this boat Something in this scripture jumped out at me. The Bible says that Jesus was on the bottom of the boat sleeping. Hold on now, JC. 
How are you going to sleep when your disciples are in a storm? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when I look closely at this text, Jesus teaches us how to take care of ourselves. Now, Jesus had a long day. In Mark 1, when you go back and read Mark uh, chapter 1, Jesus heals folks who had uh, demonic spirits. And he even healed uh, Peter's mother-in-law. In, -law. in uh, chapter 2 of Mark, Jesus healed a paralyzed man. And in chapter 3, Jesus healed a man who had a crippled hand. And then he had to deal with the Pharisees who told him, man, you can't heal folks on Sunday. So Jesus had a long day because he had to heal folks. He had to cast out demons. He had to uh, deal with his haters. Jesus had a long day. So Jesus went on the bottom of the boat and JC took a nap. That sounds like self-care to me. Ah, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus knew how to take care of himself because the Bible says that he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he went to a quiet place, and that's called the what? Transfiguration. And the Bible says that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, to quiet places, uh, and he prayed. My brothers and my sisters, I believe that God wants us to uh, use this time wisely. Uh, T.D. Jakes, the other day, the uh, question uh, uh, this man said to him, T.D. Jakes, do you think that God shut the economy down? And T.D. Jakes was wise in his answer. He paused and people have asked me that question. Dr. Williams, do you think that God is causing this? Do you think that God has shut the economy down? T.D. Jakes paused and I like his answer. He looked at the uh, reporter and said, I cannot speak for God, but I would say this, it's shut down. Regardless of your philosophy, America is running on fumes. The economy has shut down. We are on, uh, I don't want to say life support, but things, we're not moving uh, rapidly right now. Things have shut down. And I, here's what I believe. I believe that God wants us to use this time wisely. I heard a uh, woman the other day who said, who said, Dr. Williams, I'm so tired. There's so much going on. Uh, 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 are the kids at home? They're driving me crazy. Well, I want to repeat something that I said to you uh, before. The kids are home now. They out. That's not uh, going to change. We are on lockdown in this country. That's not going to change right now. Uh, we have to keep distance from each other. We call it social distance. That's not going to change. So we have a choice now. We can whine or we can use our time wisely. And here's what I think that we should do. While you have this extra time on your hand, listen to me. Uh, go on YouTube and learn how to paint. Learn a trade. Uh, learn how to uh, uh, sew. Exercise. Read a book, pray for somebody, use this time wisely, uh, go back to school, work on improving you. We can whine about who, where we are, or we can use this time wisely. Now, can I go to the fifth point? When you are in a storm, don't panic, pray. I'm going to say that one more time. When you are in a storm, don't panic, pray. My brothers and my sisters, I, I don't know about you. But I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that prayer changes things. And the thing that I love about prayer is that I don't have to have an appointment to talk to God. All I have to do is call him up and have a conversation with him. James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse says, The effective fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Luke uh the 18th chapter, verse number one, says that a person should always pray and not faint. I believe that we should pray all the time. When life makes no sense, my brothers and sisters, we need to pray. When Satan tries to attack us, we need to pray. When we are at a crossroad, we need to pray. When our faith is weak and our backs are against the wall, we need to pray. When you're tired of being sick and tired, you need to pray. And I'm here to tell you that there is power in prayer. So when you're in a storm, don't panic. Just be still 
and pray. And as I get ready to close my last point, my favorite point, you can make it through the storms. Whether you have one, whether you have many, you can make it through life storms if you know who is in the boat with you. I'm going to say it one more time. You can make it through life storms if you know who you have in the boat with you. What are you talking about, Dr. Williams? The disciples panic. They went downstairs and told Jesus, hey, Jesus, how can you sleep, man, during a time like this? Do you care if we perish? Do you not? Do you even care? Jesus awoke from his sleep, got up, went to the top of the boat, and he started speaking to the winds and the waves. And Jesus is the only one I know that can speak to the storm and say, peace be still. Jesus spoke to the winds and the wave and said, chill, peace be still. And I, my brothers and my sisters, I believe that the disciples, I believe they panicked because they forgot who was in the boat with them. What are you talking about, Dr. Williams? Uh, on this Palm Sunday, I want to remind you that's watching that Jesus is still in the boat with you. Uh, Jesus didn't come into Jerusalem, gave his life on, 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 gave his life on the cross so Satan can defeat us. So on this Palm Sunday, I want to remind you that Jesus came into the world to uh, let the whole world know that he was the son of God. He made his identity known to the entire world. And oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem in Luke, uh, the 19th chapter. And the reason why he wept he wept over uh, the sinful condition of all the people. And then he wept also because some of the people did not uh, recognize him as the Messiah. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. And, and I submit to you today that his disciples panicked because they didn't uh, know who they had in the boat with them. So my brothers and my sisters, as I get ready to close, I want to remind you today that Jesus is still in the boat with you. He is in your situation right now. And I stop by to tell you that Jesus is still the Lord of the universe. And he hadn't forgotten about America yet. He has not forgotten about any other country on this planet. He is still our Lord and Savior of this world. And on this Palm Sunday, I want to remind you one more time that you are not in the boat alone because Jesus Christ has made his identity known to the entire world. And when you know who is in the boat with you, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen to you. I'll stop by to tell you that Jesus is still Lord. He is still Lord over the universe, Lord over our lives. And he is God with all power in his hands. My friends, you can make it through life storms when you understand that Jesus Christ has all power in his hands. And the hymnist said it best when he said, I just want God to stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, I want God to stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, I need the Lord to stand by me. Thou who rules the wind and the water, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, I don't know about you today, I just want God to stand by me. When the host of hell assails the hymn that said, when my strength begins to fail, thou who has never lost a battle, please stand by me. And my brothers and sisters, I need God to stand by America right now. And I'm telling you right now that God is with you in your home. God is with you in your business. God is with you in your health. The Lord is with you because the Bible says the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. I pray that this word has helped you in some way. I pray that it has blessed your soul in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, today is Holy Communion. 
There is nothing more important than that. Jesus came, listen to me, came into Jerusalem. He was beaten, spat on, made fun of, died on the cross. And on the third day, guess what? He got up with all power in his hands. And I'm here to tell you, if it wasn't for the cross, there would be no redemption. If it wasn't for the blood, there would be no forgiveness. If it wasn't for Jesus, there would be no eternal life. Because Paul said, if Christ did not get up from the grave, our preaching, our laboring is in vain. So today, my friends, right where you are, in the comfort of your home, I'm going to pray over the uh, bread. I'm going to pray over this uh, wine. And we're going to receive it together. So right now, if you will, if you will, it is time. Here is the bread. It is symbolic of his body. And here's the wine. It is symbolic of his blood. On the night in which Christ uh, gave himself up for us, you know what he did? He took the bread, listen now. And he said, take, this is my body. Take my friends and eat together. But before we do that, let's pray over it. Eternal God, consecrate now this bread and this wine. And oh God, we thank you for the price you paid on Calvary in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, let every believer that's out there watching say amen. Friends, bread, his body, take now and eat. Likewise, the uh, wine, take now and drink. Jesus said to his disciples, go now and sin no more. My friends, right, right where you are, head bow, eyes closed once again. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Father, once again, we do not want to end this service without thanking you for your grace and for your mercy. We pray for our president. We pray for our leaders, God. We pray, God, that you uh, touch scientists and doctors, God, and find a cure for COVID-19. Father, we thank you this day in Jesus' name. Let everybody out there say together, amen. Know that I love you. Know that I, I love you and I cannot wait to see you soon. But in the meantime, we can still have church together. We can praise him together online. God bless you and remember that I love you and you can't do anything about it. Welcome to this Palm Sunday service that Pastor Williams, Reverend Dr. Gregory Williams and I, First Lady Davina Williams are bringing to you from our home because of the coronavirus. Uh, we pray that you enjoyed his sermon. He so eloquently brought to you, you can handle life's storms, amen. And that was brought to you from Mark 4 and 35. And I pray that we all are in this boat, in this ship together with the same master, amen. And that master is in control today and will be forevermore. And we know that God is in control despite what we may see and what things may look like. Despite what we hear in the news, God is still in control because guess what? He has the whole world in his hand. He is in control of the world. He has the world in his hands because he knows your name and my name. He has the whole world in his hands.
you were blessed. Please keep praying, keep trusting in God, and keep believing. And remember, he knows your name, he knows everything about you, and he is in control of the world. <laughs>